My name is Francis Dungu and I am from the Camry Welcome Trust program in Kenya. The cellular immunology group uh, includes um, scientists who are studying the human, um, the cells of the human immune system and the product that they make in order to understand how people become immune to disease, either following natural infection or immunization. So this group has got people who are working with HIV and other viruses. It's got people working with malaria. And there are also people working with malnutrition. I'm personally interested in malaria and malaria vaccines. And so my work um, includes um, understanding naturally acquired immunity and picking whatever lessons we can learn from, from it to develop a malaria vaccine. So our platform for malaria immunology in Kirifi is based on um, two platforms. One platform is uh, conducting uh, long-term longitudinal studies in children and the other platform is using experimental uh, medicine where we infect uh, people being exposed to malaria uh, in order to identify individuals who are immune to malaria. So if we can identify people who are immune to malaria and then we compare their immune responses to malaria with people who are not yet immune, then we can identify immune responses that can be used to identify antigens that we can include in vaccines. Another way that uh, my work would help in um, developing malaria vaccines is helping in understanding why it is so difficult to immunize um, people who, are, who live in endemic areas. So one of the things that we've learned in the last few years is that if you develop a vaccine in Oxford or in America, and those vaccines actually tend to work quite well in animal models and in malaria naive individuals, but when you move them to malaria endemic areas, they're not very immunogenic and they're not as protective. And so it appears like prior exposure to malaria modifies the immune system, making it more difficult to immunize people. And my work is also trying to understand uh, what uh, that modification is and how it can be counteracted in uh, de delivering an effective vaccine. So one of the most exciting research projects that we've conducted uh, in Kirifi uh, recently is comparing the immune response to malaria in individuals who are currently infected with malaria. So people who are living with um, constant uh, infections, you know, they, they, these are people who are being persistently infected or they have chronic infections. And we also have um, another a group of individuals who were exposed to malaria a long time ago, but they are no longer exposed to malaria because malaria has been controlled in the area where they live. So in other words, it's like comparing malaria, immune responses to malaria in individuals who are currently living with malaria and individuals who were historically infected a long time ago. And what we found is that current exposure um, interferes or impairs your, the ability of the cells in these individuals to respond to um, malaria antigen in the way we would expect. So in the last uh, five to 10 years, one of the great things that have happened, of course, is that um, so funders like the Wellcome Trust um, have um, decided to support uh, experimental human medicine. That is, uh, for infections like malaria where you, it's easy to treat the disease, then you can uh, infect people who are semi-immune to malaria in order to understand uh, immunity to malaria. And that is one of the things that we're doing in Kenya at the moment. And that is very exciting because um, the immunoepidemiological studies are, you know, happening in the field are confounded by many factors that makes it hard to um, make conclusive um, uh, decisions on what, which immune responses or antigens that we can use uh, for vaccines. So other things that, I, um, that have um, lines of investigation that have come up in the last uh, five, ten years is that um, uh, we have, we've seen uh, improvement in high throughput technology for screening 
antigens that can be included in vaccines, and I think that is also uh, quite good. And also uh, in the world of immunology, um, so uh, people have learned how to make human monoclonal antibodies, and these human monoclonal antibodies, especially in the case of HIV, autoimmunity and cancer, um, are actually being considered uh, as therapeutics, immunotherapeutics. And in some cases also, like in infectious diseases, we can use these monoclonal antibodies in the discovery for antigens that could be used in uh, vaccines. And I think that is also quite exciting. And in some cases, the same monoclonal antibodies can be used to, um, to block uh, any undesirable immune responses that may uh, result in uh, uh, the immune response causing disease or um, interfering with immunization. I think it is really important for us to understand uh, naturally acquired immunity to malaria uh, because as you know malaria continues to be a major public health um, issue in uh, the countries in Africa and uh, in Southeast Asia. And what we've seen in uh, the last three years, even though we have effective um, uh, drugs for treating malaria and uh, um, insecticides uh, for controlling malaria through um, killing mosquitoes, is that the malaria control has stalled. And so we need new tools to be included together with the current tools to drive malaria transmission down further. And my research will uh, inform the design and the development of new vaccines and other therapeutics.